are you all? I hope you all are fine. I welcome you all to Sri G M Donda Primary School and our e-learning session. In today's e-learning session, we are going to learn social science subject in which I'll explain you chapter number six, human resources. Now, first of all, what is called human resources or the census? A census of population is the total process of collecting. compiling evaluating analyzing and publishing demographic economic and social data at a specific time to all persons in a country or the enumeration of the entire population of a country or a re- region at a particular time is known as a census or we can say collection and cataloging of information about people living in a country or any particular region of the country is known as the census children now we'll learn about population growth in india the population of india has increased by 18.1 crores in a decade between 2001 to 2011 However, the population growth rate has gone down, which is a noteworthy point. Moreover, there has been an increase in the number of the literate or educated citizens. The population of India in two thousand one was one hundred and two point eighty seven crores, which has increased to one hundred and twenty one point zero one crores in the year two thousand eleven. this is a matter to worry about for the central government and hence various policies and schemes have been launched to bring the population growth under control consequently the rate of population growth has gone down by 1.7 now we'll discuss the reasons for the population growth population increase is a natural phenomenon but there are various factors responsible for the population growth immigration from other countries for industrial or trading or educational or just for the settlement purpose is a reason is also a kind of reason for the population growth second is the low death rate in the last two decades earlier the rate of population growth was low as the infant and female mortality rate was high the scenario has completely changed today today nutritious food is no, now easily available to the people and communicable diseases are under control due to the advanced medical treatment and vaccination programs immediate medical help speedy mode of transport and communication are easily available thus the death has gone down this has led to a higher population growth rate apart from the above factors the average life expectancy of humans has increased the average life expectancy of humans in 1920 was 40 to 41 years which has now increased to 63 to 64 years children there are many factors responsible for an increase in the birth rate few of them are literacy superstitions orthodox thinking speech, social customs where a male child is considered important child marriage poverty widow remarriage negative attitude towards the idea of a small family etc a rising population causes in administrative problems for example shortage of food water housing environmental population conservation employment traffic congestion etc to deal with such problems many policies schemes and legal measures have to be planned now factors affecting the density of population in which we will discuss about birth rate death rate yes children birth rate means the total live births in one year per 1000 persons in a given area is known as a birth rate or 
बर्थ रेट इज द नंबर ऑफ लीव लाइव बर्थ्स पर थाउजेंड पर्सन इन अयर फॉर द पास्ट फ्यू ईयर्स द बर्थ रेट इन इंडिया हैज बिन कंसिस्टेंटली डिक्लाइनिंग पीपल एक्सरसाइज फैमिली प्लानिंग मोर देन बिफोर इन रूरल एरियाज द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ फैमिली प्लानिंग इज मच लेसर ड्यू टू द लैक ऑफ एजुकेशन लैक ऑफ हेल्थ फैसिलिटी पॉवर्टी अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड इग्नोरेंस अबाउट द मीन्स ऑफ बर्थ कंट्रोल ना वॉट इज कॉल्ड डेथ रेट सो द डेथ रेट डेथ रेट इज द नंबर ऑफ डेथ्स पर थाउजेंड पर्सन इन अयर और वी कैन से द नंबर ऑफ डेथ्स इन वन ईयर पर थाउजेंड पर्सन इन स्पेसिफिक एरिया इज अ टर्म्ड एज डेथ रेट द वर्ड हु टेक्स बर्थ डाइज टू हेल्स द डेथ रेट कैन नेवर बी जीरो स्टिल वेरियस रिसर्चेस मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट्स मेडिसिन वैक्सीनेशन कंट्रोल ओवर डिजीजेस न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी एक्सेट्रा कैन ब्रिंक डाउन द डेथ रेट नाउ माइग्रेशन इज ऑल्सो वन फैक्टर ये चिल्ड्रन दैट अफेक्ट्स पॉपुलेशन और द ग्रोथ ऑफ पॉपुलेशन सो वेन पीपल शिफ्ट फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर इट इज नोन एज माइग्रेशन और द थर्ड कंपोनेंट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ इज माइग्रेशन मीन्स माइग्रेशन इज अ मूवमेंट ऑफ पीपल अक्रॉस रीजन्स एंड टेरिटरीज माइग्रेशन कैन बी इंटरनल मीन्स विद इन द कंट्री और इंटरनेशनल मीन्स बिटवीन द कंट्रीज वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज कंपोजिशन so the population of a nation is generally grouped into three broad categories children working age and age head same way the population composition means the classification of the total population into various categories is called population composition the categorization is done as per male female age group literacy rate rural urban areas religions linguistic groups professional groups etc through study of these categories help us to understand the population composition age structure if we are categorizing then the total population of the nation comprises of three age groups children adults and senior citizens means below 14 years are children 15 to 59 years old people are in adult category and above 59 years in senior citizens category among the above three groups maximum and the most important difference is seen in the first and the third group as per the 2001 census 35 to 40% of total population is below 18 years whereas the 7% to 10% is senior citizens rest all are adults now we discuss the sex ratio now what is called sex ratio then sex ratio is defined as the number of females per 1000 males in the population the sex ratio in the country has always remained unfavorable to females so in other words if we will discuss sex ratio then sex ratio can be defined as the number of females per 1000 males the sex ratio has been reducing consistently since 1951 now here five highest populated states in india as of 2011 census and they are uttar pradesh maharashtra bihar west bengal and andhra pradesh five least populated states in india as of 2001 sorry 2011 census 
आर सिक्किम मिजोरम अरुणाचल प्रदेश गोवा एंड नागालैंड फॉर यूनियन टेरिटरीज एंड सिटी ऑफ न्यू डेली द हाइस्ट पॉपुलेटेड यूनियन टेरिटरी हैज पॉपुलेशन ऑफ वन करोड सेवन सिक्सटी सेवन लैख फिफ्टी थ्री थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी फाइव पीपल एंड लक्षद्वीप द लोएस्ट पॉपुलेटेड यूनियन टेरिटरी हैज अ पॉपुलेशन ऑफ सिक्सटी फोर थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी नाइन पीपल If we are discussing population density, then population per unit square is known as population density, and every density of population in India is three hundred and eighty-two per square kilometer. Now, if we will discuss literacy, then literacy in India is key for socio-economic progress. The development of any country depends on the literacy rate of that country. Literacy is the important criteria to measure the standard of living of population and its social development. Literacy is also the key to economic development of any nation. The definition of literacy was fixed at the time of census of nineteen ninety one. According to it. any individual who is 6 years or above and who can read write and understand any one language may be considered as literate the literacy rate in india has been increasing consistently which is a positive sign now if we are going to discuss changes in the in the population composition we have to discuss all the points given below quantitative changes qualitative changes religious group and linguistic group now first if we will go with quantitative changes in which if we just go or look at the heading quantitative means the changes regarding quantity of the population so sometimes we notice a rise or fall in the population this happens due to the population growth and migration of people the conditions leading to a quantitative changes are landlessness low per head land ratio urbanization as well as social and administrative reasons second if we will take quantitative changes means regarding one Well, sorry. Second is qualitative changes means regarding the quality, yes, of the people or the of or the population. So the changes observed in the levels of health and education indicate qualitative changes. It alters the way of thinking and behavior as well as style and standard of living. The other factors responsible for qualitative changes are. dedication hard work patriotism enthusiasm sorry and enthusiasm courage etc these factors bring about socio cultural changes Ling- religious group so india is a secular state that we know people who follow different religions stay together here among all the religions hindus are in majority followed by muslims christians sikhs buddhists jains parsis etc are considered as a religious group and if we are going to linguistic groups then india is a large country with the diversity as its prime characteristic currently there are 22 languages recognized by our constitution Hindi and English are the two official languages. The state have been formed on the basis of languages, and this is considered as the linguistic group. Another factor is health structure. Means. the health of a person can be defined as a physical mental emotional social economic and spiritual well being the best level 
of the health helps in fostering the process in national development and the last we will discuss the point is national population policy the population of a nation is its wealth and strength if the human resource is educated trained healthy and strong then it will foster the development of the nation a carefully planned use of human resource builds the foundation for the development of the nation to keep the pace with the developed nations it is very important that the human resource is developed the factors that hamper the progress of a na nation must be eliminated or controlled overpopulation is one such factor which has to be de dealt with with as per the population policies adopted since 1951 as a part of national population policy various programs like nutritious food program care for mother and child pure drinking water school health programs safeguarding the rights of children etc must reach to the grassroot levels even the five years plans are made keeping the national population policy in focus we must resolve to contribute as committed and responsible citizens towards the progress of the nation so in this chapter we have learned about human resource yes children so as a conclusion conclusion we can say that healthy india prosperous india that country is prosperous whose citizens are mentally and physically prosperous i hope you understood the chapter it's time for me to say you goodbye children goodbye have a nice day